Hey, what's going on guys and welcome back to another Fallout 4 mod review. It's been a little while since our last video and just really quick, I had jury duty and so there was a, a pretty big pause not only on videos being made but also modding because that took up a whole lot of time. But my case is now over so I can get back to it and we had a lot of releases this week. One in particular I really wanted to check out was the one that we were checking out today and that is the Lewis gun by the Fallout London team. This was a huge surprise drop and I was very excited to see it and I was really bummed out that I couldn't cover it immediately, but I'm happy to be able to show it to you guys now. And this is a really, really fun weapon. Something people have actually been asking for for a very long time is a Lewis gun mod. And now we have one proper with a beautiful custom model, custom textures, and of course some wonderful custom animations. A very necessary part of this mod considering the Lewis gun's very unique magazine style. Now, one thing that is very important to note about this mod is it is not an exact recreation of the real world Lewis gun. It does have some pretty interesting differences that are stylistic choices by the authors to make it a bit more Fallout, I suppose. Now, this weapon will be featured in the much larger DLC size Fallout London project, but now we do have the chance to play it as a standalone mod, at least in the meantime. That being said, there may be changes to the weapon by the time it is fully implemented in the Fallout London project, so take this as it is and not as a sort of precursor to the final product that may be in Fallout London, because we have no way of knowing if this is exactly what it's going to look like in the final product. That all aside, let's take this weapon as it is. Like I mentioned, this is a wonderful new custom model with some awesome custom animations and even some custom sound design. If you want to get your hands on this weapon, you'll actually find it as a one-of-a-kind weapon over at Fort Strong. Once there, head to the southmost office and you will see this thing hanging on the wall. And just so you know, Niher did have a hand in making this weapon, especially in regards to the animations. And so when you pick this up for the first time, a fancy little animation will play, just like other weapon mods by Niher. Once you have picked up this weapon for the first time, it actually will unlock it as a craftable weapon, and so you can then start crafting more versions of it over at the chemistry station. There actually is a small addition to the leveled list for this weapon, but it's specifically for the legendary pool. So if you kill a legendary enemy after level 25, there is a very, very small chance that you'll get a legendary version of the Lewis gun. Now, if all that sounds too hard for you, you can always just spawn it in via the console by using the help command. I think that covers most of the basic stuff. Let's go ahead and take this weapon in game and start checking out some of its finer details, starting with its stats. So here we are with the most basic version of the Lewis gun from this mod. And you'll see this thing has a very interesting design. I actually really, really like it, especially with this funky looking stock. This is a pretty dang cool weapon. Now, this thing has a base damage of 18. It is only available in fully automatic and it is affected by the commando perk. This thing uses 5mm as its base ammo type, but you can rechamber it over at the weapons workbench. This thing has a base fire rate of 109, which can also be modified with attachments. It has a range of 107, an accuracy of 64, a weight of 13.8 pounds, and a value of 121 caps. Now, one small thing I will say is that the use of 5mm ammo is a bit of an odd choice, but it's one I actually kind of like like, especially for Fallout. Fallout guns have been known to use some crazy ammo types in these games, but I think this is a pretty cool way to make use of surplus 5mm, especially in Fallout 4, which the only weapon that uses that is the minigun, so I think this is a pretty cool alternative. Now then, let's talk custom animations. Definitely one of the shining pieces of this mod. Starting off with a custom unequipping and equipping animations, of course, for a huge weapon like this, that is definitely something it's very nice to have. And then, of course, a custom reload animation. Now, isn't that snazzy? A wonderful, wonderful animation. But I do have a very, very minor complaint. It's probably something you didn't even notice the first time around, but I'll be sure to show you right now. If we fire this thing one more time, and we reload it, you'll notice right here that the weapon has nowhere for the bullets to go. The magazine just kind of sits on top and the bullets teleport into the barrel. Just a bit of an odd thing for such an interesting mechanism. They did go out of their way to fully animate the magazine and it even rotates but yet, there's nowhere for the bullets to go. Just something I thought I'd mention, but while you're using this thing, you'll probably never even notice that. As we resume the reload, there is also one other minor thing, and that is that the magazine actually teleports on a partial reload. It's 
not that noticeable, but it is something that is there. Now, there is actually one other set of animations we need to talk about, and that is for the carry handle. There is a carry handle attachment that totally changes the way you hold the weapon, and it's very, very cool. It comes with its own unequipping and equipping animations as well, and of course, a custom reload that goes with it too. It definitely obstructs the squaring quite a bit, but it is still really, really neat and offers an awesome way to fire this weapon. Now then, let's quickly talk about accuracy for this weapon. You'll see we have a pretty decent set of iron sights, and be aware, these are the only sights available for this weapon. It does not have any options for more sights over at the weapon's workbench, so this is what we've got. However, they do perform pretty well from close to mid-ranges and decently enough at long ranges. Let's go ahead and see how this thing does. And no sweat whatsoever, the bullets are pretty accurate on this thing. The front sight is a little bit thick, so that's not really going to pose a problem until you start shooting at things that are a little bit too far away for this weapon anyways. Now then, let's talk attachments over at the weapons workbench. We do have some really, really cool additions. Surprisingly, not some of the basic stuff you'd expect, like different customizable stocks, but we do have some pretty interesting attachments that make this thing a lot of fun to use. Starting off the receiver section, we have your sort of standard allotment of automatic receivers, but we also have some pretty interesting rechambers. The base version of this gun is, of course, in 5mm, but we also have a 45 rechamber. And we even have a 308 rechamber to boost that damage up a little bit. Then for the barrels, we have the standard barrel, a light barrel, a heavy barrel, an incendiary propellant, which will add a nice little gas tank here to add incendiary bullets, as well as a heavy version of that barrel. Then we have a kinetic refraction converter, which is essentially a fancy way of saying this thing now shoots lasers. And then we also have an option to throw on a plasma diffusion chamber, which is the same idea, but now this thing will shoot plasma projectiles, which is pretty cool. A plasma Lewis gun is definitely very, very fallout. Now we have the option to throw on that carry handle. That's what's going to convert the animations for this weapon. We have an option to change out the pan magazine for a light mag. This is going to make it, of course, a lighter weight, and it's also going to add faster reload speed and faster aiming. And then we have a muzzle section where you can throw on a compensator taken from the Thompson and a muzzle brake taken from the hunting rifle. Now, these muzzles cannot be attached if you throw on any of the energy weapon conversions, so keep that in mind if you want to keep these accuracy buffs. Now then is of course time to do our damage test. It's been a while since we've done one of these. We'll be running three tests today against our Death Claws as a damage baseline. We'll be using the Lewis gun in its standard configuration, a fully upgraded version with the best damage I could get out of the attachments, and then a, the same version but with fully upgraded commando perks so that we can see how this thing will do in the late game, or at least with a max level character. Starting on the left here, we'll be using the base version of the Lewis gun. Let's see how this thing does. Aiming for the Death Claw's weak point with 47 rounds in our magazine. Oh, and sadly, we do have to reload, and this is a pretty lengthy reload. That's 47 bullets down. And about 11 more, or 9 more to go. So... Just over 50 bullets and a death claw is down. Let's see if we can do any better with a fully upgraded version using lasers. Sorry, I pulled out the wrong one there. Let's see how this thing does. And the answer is much, much better. Didn't even need to reload with this thing, allowing us to take that death claw down in around 30 shots. Let's see how we do when we have the maxed out commando perk. That's not really going to change any of the laser damage, but it should change the base damage quite a bit. Let's see how it does. And the answer is much, much better. That death clock goes down really, really fast. So it is definitely worth the upgrades for this weapon and especially upgrading that commando perk since this thing is again, only available in fully automatic. So yeah, guys, that is the Lewis gun as part of the Fallout London project, a very cool new weapon. May not be perfect for some of you who are hoping for an exact replica of the Lewis gun, but I think it's still a really, really cool mod. And at the very least, it does add a nice set of animations that maybe somebody could use for some future weapon projects. If you want to try this mod out, it will, of course, be linked down in the description below as always. So I highly recommend you check it out for yourself and make sure that this is something you want to add to your load order. 
With that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to drop a rating and consider subscribing if you haven't already for more videos just like this. There should be more Fallout modding content coming very, very soon. As always, a big thank you to all of my patrons for supporting every single video, and a very special thank you to Backbone Danny, Freedom, Glasma, Indecisive Wolf, Logan Rigmaiden, Madly Matt, Microhan, Moonlit Gamer, Oscar, Scott, Starling, Timmy76, Youth RC, and Voider for joining the Tier 3 Patreon membership. If you'd like to support the channel over on Patreon, you can do so using the link down in the description, but it is completely optional. Thanks again for watching, guys, and I hope to see you all in the next one. Peace!